11 o'clock, so we're going to begin. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the Monday, December 13th, 2021, Beacon City School District School Board meeting. I'd like to call it to order. Please stand for the pledge. I didn't hear the loudspeaker. Is what on? Audio. Oh, um, Mike, is yeah. my audio on? We're good. Um, Kelly, roll call, please. Better bid? Here. Lynn? Here. Mr. Galloway? Here. Ms. Johnson? Here. Do you want this one? Here. Okay. Um, Delayed. He texted. He's delayed. Here. Uh, delayed also. Here. Here. Thank you. Matt, can you review the fire exits? Yeah, exits are in the back of the LGI. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are going to begin with open to the public. I, I did want to mention to the board, um, after open to the public, I'd like to change the rest of the order of the agenda just to um, move student and school presentations after public comment. I think Anna Sullivan is going to join us from the oh, there she is, um, Foundation for Beacon Schools. And I didn't want her to have to wait through workshop. So um, open to the public. There's a few new, new faces here. And um, I just wanted to um, reiterate that it's a four minute time limit. Uh, please do not use the names of any staff members or administrators directly. Uh, you, we are here to, he to listen to you, but we may not respond, which I understand can feel frustrating. Um, but that is the process, and we, we're definitely listening to you. And um, if Matt wants to give any comment after the end of public comment, he will, but he's, he is not obligated to. It's up to him. Um, so, is there a list? Anthony, do you mind grabbing it? Joy Beno. Hello, all. Got it. Hello. Is it doing okay? Yep. Good. Oh. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> other people here. <laughs> All right. Um, so my name is Joy Bonneau. She got my hair. Um, I'm a teacher here, and uh, I thank you for all you do. You're doing a lot. And this is a really hard time. Um, I do want to speak again tonight to request a halt to all vaccine clinics on our school campuses. I've spoken before of the dangers of the COVID vaccines the injuries that have resulted and even deaths reported to the CDC's own database entitled VAERS. I have given you tips on accessing this information by going to openvares.com. To this day, I have no evidence that you have read or watched anything I have sent. This is unfortunate since you are in charge of the safety of our children. Listening is shown by action, yet I have not seen one action taken to consider this information into your decision making. No questions, no comments. Sometimes people won't even look at me while I'm speaking. Do I make you feel uncomfortable with the information that I share? It should make you very uncomfortable. Yet, the last time I've seen any real discussion from the board, it was over the closing of Madawan. Why? Aren't the children's lives more important than them being late for school? Yet, we are perfectly fine with pushing a vaccine created and marketed by companies with a history of felonies. Yes, that's correct. Moderna is the only one without a felony under their belt because this is their first vaccine. In 1986, a law was passed that deemed these companies with near zero liability. But I have already stated this. Maybe there is a callous attitude because these reactions to the vaccines 
have happened to other people in other communities and not your children. Maybe it's because you don't know anyone personally who has been injured. Is that a reason to not look and to not care? Maybe it's because things have been hidden from your view and labeled lies by those you thought were protecting you, but they're not. They're not protecting you. Um, and I just hope that you would uh, take a look and a listen to the information I'm going to share. I've spoken before about the federal panel on November 2nd that was done by Senator Ron Johnson. Uh, it was a three hour panel where um, medical experts and those that have been injured by the vaccine um, spoke, but they have been repeatedly uh, denied any uh, access to medical care if they've been injured by the CDC, the NIH, um, and any other acronym I can't remember right now. Um, they've been forgotten. Many people um, have taken their own lives at this point because after they look for support from people, they're banned from Facebook uh, because nobody wants to hear it. So it's time though that we listen, that we look, that we prove out what we're doing. And I am very, very saddened by this district um, just rushing into uh, using this, uh, this vaccine that is new, different, and the clinical trials, uh, the phase two and the phase three clinical trials have just been blown through. And, and we can't do this, we can't do this. But I have no evidence that you're listening to this and I won't unless there, was, there would be some action. So with that, um, I rest my case. I will send you that information from the federal panel and I hope that you look at it. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else that would like to make a public comment tonight? So, um, Anna, do you mind if we do our workshop and then have you, is that okay? Okay. So we're going to move on to our workshop. Um, we have, um, uh, we actually have a student of distinction from BOCES, or it's our student that goes to BOCES, Clayon Harrison here tonight, um, that we would like to recognize. I'm going to stand right here, okay? Put you right there. I'm Melissa Murphy. I'm the principal at Duchess Bosey Salt Point Center. Thank you for allowing us to come this evening to recognize this gentleman. So Duchess Bosey <laughs> nominates one component district student monthly from one of the programs and honors them as a student of distinction for the month. Cyan's actually the student of distinction for October, but due to cancellations and other things, we're here tonight. Um, students are selected for this award because they're hardworking, dedicated to their studies, and the embodiment of positive behavior. So Salt Point Center um, is honored to recognize Mr. Harrison. Cyan has remained committed to improving himself in all academic areas. He's really a good example of a student who works hard, asks for help, and is a positive member of the school community. Miss Hastings, come up here. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, like missing Link is his teacher. <laughs> um, Cyan agrees with me that he has made good changes at Salt Point Center and he reports that his goal is to do his work and focus so he can come back and join you at Beacon High School next year. Cyan uses the zones of regulation to help him with his feelings, which is a big shift for Cyan and how he feels about school. He reported to me that he used to sit in class and not do anything. Now he does his work, he asks for help when he gets stuck and he likes coming to school. His favorite subject is math. He likes to focus on trying to solve problems, and in class, Ms. Hastings is working on using a number line with you, right? <laughs> Cyan's favorite book was, uh, that he's ever read is Charlotte's Web. He said that he likes the way that Charlotte was a good friend to Wilbur, and he continued to tell me that Charlotte helped and protected Wilbur, and that's what a good friend does, and he is always a good friend. Cyan's advice for other people having a hard time is to not give up. His recommended strategy is to take five deep breaths. Cyan likes to tell others that he, when they do a good job and when they do something right. After school, he likes to go home and listen to music, and he is a Michael Jackson fan. <laughs> Come on. You got to. <laughs> Come on. You got to do the whole, whole walk. <laughs> yeah. Very shy. <laughs> So he's a very talented dancer and he 
when recognizing um, everybody and talking about this award, Science said he knows he's had support from Beacon, and he loves to call Ms. Rincon and Ms. Zapala about his progress. He credits his mom and his GMA for always supporting him through difficult times and assisting him with his work. Cyan said the best part of having the support from his mom and GMA is that they always correct him and tell him what to do well in school. They care about him, they love him, they show me they love me, and I love them a lot too. Aww. And I also want to, Ms. Jones, who was his previous 128, is also with us tonight, but mm -hmm. we, don't need, we don't need a 128 because we're doing so well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so congratulations oh. to Cyan Harrison being our Duchess Rosie Student of Distinction. You want to say anything? Just quick. Thanks for having me for this year. Kind of little side to this year. You what? Kind of little side to this. It's okay to be shy. Yeah. I I'm still nervous about any public speaking. <laughs> on, I got to tell you. Yeah. You did a great job. Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so guys. Thanks. And. Congratulations. Thank you so much for coming. We're so proud to Thank have you, you as yeah. part of Thank our you guys. Thank you. school community. And um, Thank you. I just want to also Thank say, Sion, that you and I have the same Thank book you. in common as our favorite book. Oh, yeah. I really so love Charles like Web also. I cannot read it without crying. <laughs> Do you do Michael Jackson dance moves too? Mary? I really like Michael Jackson, but I do not try to dance. <laughs> yeah, I can only I can only moonwalk. I can't. Uh, <laughs> Moonwalking is impressive. Hardest part. <laughs> uh, congratulations and to, to you, to your teachers, to your to your ma and, and G ma and the whole Very family. Nice yeah. <laughs> take it. <Wow>. Take it. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you all for coming tonight. It's so nice to see a student in person. We really can get so separate from the work, which is supposed to be all student-centered, and so it's always great to have a student here to remind us why we are here. So thank you, thank you very much. And I, I would like somebody to take a picture of Cyan's whole team with him, so that yeah, you can all I, remember this tonight. Yeah. When you when you guys are ready to go, I'll try to get a picture of you out in the hallway. Yeah, and yeah. it'd be nice if you would join too. First. Yeah. Oh, that'd be I'll great. A picture of me. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we can do, we can get the whole board. Should we just? <laughs> do you want? All right. Let's do, do it. Want to go? Let's do the yeah. picture. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy holidays. <laughs> um, do you want to do your? Yeah. Are you going to do the superintendent's report? You'll do your update then. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Okay, great. So um, can I have a motion to change the agenda, bringing um, student school presentations and parent groups after the workshop? So I guess I would be making it um, 4.0. So moved. Second. Anthony, second by Alyssa. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? One, two, three, four, five. Um, so, and I'm in favor, so it passes eight to zero. Okay. Anna. Anna's going to introduce herself, but um, just to give her a brief introduction to the board, because not everyone knows her. She's a parent of um, a student at Rombout now, and um, the new the chair and founder of F Foundation for Beacon Schools. Great. Thanks, Meredith. Um, good evening, everyone. It's lovely to see you all in person. I've been mostly following you all online during the pandemic, so um, I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, you, some of you may already have heard in the community that a new foundation has been formed to support Beacon schools, all six of Beacon's public schools. Um, we formed as a group of concerned parents, residents, uh, faculty um, during the height of the pandemic. So we met remotely for many months trying to figure out what to do with this or new organization uh, at a time when you know, state aid was very uncertain. We weren't kind of sh sure what type of support the district would need. Um, in the, the time that's uh, 
in Seward, we've, um, we've incorporated with the state of New York. We've registered with the New York State Bureau of Charities, and just a couple weeks ago, um, we obtained our 501c3 designation from the IRS. So we are, we are ready to go, um, ready to spread our wings. And uh, in, a, I think, about a week, you'll see a website for the foundation. Um, but we have a Facebook page. Um, and we've already started uh, fundraising on a small scale, but our goals are ambitious to support the amazing work that this district does to support our faculty with teacher grants, um, to support innovative pilot projects, to really use it as a, as a testing ground for, for new ideas, new teaching methods, new technologies. We would like to fund uh, some district-wide curriculum initiatives and very grateful to have spoken to Matt and to uh, Saggy, um, just in some preliminary discussions about you know, what types of curriculum um, enrichment might be a, be a good fit with, with your existing goals. Um, so we, I just wanted to introduce the foundation to everybody in person because we haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, and we will, we have several BOE members on our advisory committee. Um, so we will be providing a way to give you regular updates, but we have um, quite a few exciting things in the pipeline for, for 2022. We're working on a, a 5K race that will, will benefit the foundation. We're looking at a um, student film festival that is hosted by the foundation, and we're in the works uh, planning our inaugural Gala benefit. What are we going to call it, Alyssa? Don't we, know yet. Don't, we don't know yet. But uh, fling. <laughs> <laughs> party celebration. Um, Alyssa has kindly stepped up to chair that committee. So, um, just wanted to, to to say hello and to to let you all know that we'll be um, doing a lot of things to support uh, the district in the future. Thank you so okay. much. Um, are there you. any questions for Anna? Can we share the date of the launch? The big launch party. That doesn't have a name yet. <laughs> I would, only I've forgotten it. It is June 11th. 11th. Yes. Thank you. So we did check the district calendar to make sure that it didn't conflict. We know that the end of the school year is very busy with graduations and other events, but we think we found the sweet date. Um, and That's hope impressive that, in June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we hope as many of you all will, will be able to attend. So, con right. so congratulations. What, what is your mission statement? Um, so I, d I should have brought, brought it and, and read it out loud, um, but our mission is to, um, to enrich and expand um, learning opportunities in the Beacon City School District. Our, our vision statement, we've crafted a vision statement as well, which is for, for Beacon to be at the leading edge of allowing students to, to discover and cultivate their talents. So look forward to working with you all. Thank, Thank you. you. And I'm hoping that... Um, one of the board members that's also a member of the foundation can be sort of a liaison with the board and give a report in their board comments about uh, whatever is going on. Of course. So the board can be more informed. That would be great. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Thank Have you a good night. Have. Thank you. Can I have a motion um, to adjourn to executive session to review the employment history of a particular individual and for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining with the Civil Service Employees Association and with the Beacon Education Educational Administra Administrators Association and the board will return in about 40 minutes. So moved. Second. Anthony, Alyssa, other comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm in favor of passes eight to zero. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, reviewing the agenda, there are no changes or corrections. And so we're moving straight to Matt's superintendent point, report. All right. Um, so I was just uh, going to update you on some things that we are working on and some uh, highlights. Let's see if I'm doing this right. So last week we had the middle school winter music concert. There's our seventh and eighth grade band right there. It was just uh, an awesome night from start to finish. This Thursday we have the high school uh, winter concert. Um, but it was, you know, each teacher spoke uh, before the performance and uh, 
you know, so each teacher spoke about this is the first time that, you know, they have performed in a couple of years. It was a really powerful night, and I was really impressed. Uh, I'm a not, not a music guy, but I was really impressed by how good it sounded um, without having concerts for so long. They did a really nice job. So there's chorus. I think that's the seventh and eighth grade chorus, if I'm not mistaken, too. And then just also celebrating some of our winter sports. It's not the best picture in the world, but uh, that was a uh, home varsity boys basketball game uh, last week. And uh, it's also just really uh, cool to see uh, our winter sports really thriving this year. And also just the number of people coming to the games has been really great too. Students, community members, you know, masks are required. Uh, but <clears throat> we have a lot of room in the gym to spread out, and the, the students, um, especially the students, have really been coming out uh, to things this year, and it's been really great to see. Um, I think they're really craving to have events at the high school, so it's been great to have them. All right, uh, so just uh, we had to recalibrate what we're thinking with board meetings a little bit and make some adjustments. Uh, so we wanted to do the school presentations. And uh, so we're switching all six of the schools to January. So on January 10th, uh, high school, um, and these are the uh, principals making the presentations. So we'll have the high school, South Avenue, and Glenham. Then on January 24th, Roundabout, Sergeant, and Forrestal will be doing their presentations. They're going to talk about uh, focus areas that they're working on this year, things they're celebrating, and also tying. Uh, some of their work into the board goals. Um, we did this for several years running, and then we took a break last year, uh, you know, at the beginning of last year um, when we were more focused just on getting hybrid up and running. But uh, the principals are excited to be back and to do this. So we're going to pack those presentations in in January. And then we wanted to just share with you what we're thinking. This is a draft, uh, what we're thinking for the budget calendar. So right after we hear all six of those school presentations, we're going to jump into uh, this is what we're proposing uh, to be the budget calendar, um, to have the athletics and technology present the first meeting in February, transportation uh, presents, and then Anne-Marie will talk about the tax cap on the February 22nd, March 7th, facilities. Uh, March 21st, we'll have a strong instructional focus with uh, PPS. Uh, instructional budget, professional development budget will all be presented that night. April 4th uh, will be when we present just the whole overview of the budget. Um, April 26th will be the budget adoption. May 2nd is when we have the formal uh, public budget hearing and then the vote and the canvas of the votes. Uh, <clears throat> so obviously also to be woven into this calendar will be uh, me and my team meeting with PTOs and uh, doing uh, district-wide meetings. Um, I think we did a lot of that with the capital project vote this fall. We did it primarily on Zoom, so we'll keep doing Zoom and we'll weave in some in-person uh, meetings as well. I think um, there'll be lots of ways to meet um, in person uh, and, and not just do Zoom. Um, I, so I'm just going to throw this out to the board. You don't have to act on this tonight, uh, but is there, do you have any uh, feedback on the proposed calendar? It's fair, fairly similar to years past. I know we spoke, we've spoken about things that you want to see in the presentations, and we'll work on delivering that, but um, does, this, does this calendar make sense like this? <coughs> yeah. Just on, maybe you could fit in on March 7th or something, an uh, update about the capital project, where we're at, and then... Um, Maybe a discussion about having setting up a um, a reserve capital reserve. Right. Um, so if we have a proposition on the ballot for that, okay. maybe we could fit that that somewhere in there. Okay. Anne Marie, could you um, could you add this to the Google Doc that we have for the calendar? Um, I think that makes sense um, for sure. So. Just to reiterate, we've been talking uh, in the facilities committee level about uh, uh, creating another uh, capital reserve fund. One of the big reasons is this project uh, takes us out many years until we can do our next capital project, and creating a capital reserve fund would allow us to, um, to take care of things in the district before our next large capital project. Anthony? 
uh, in the past, uh, we've always had athletics and technology in the same night. Um, and, you know, I, I, and I guess, to, you know, we're preparing everybody, so it may be too late to change it. But it, it does seem a little odd to me personally that, you know, technology has a lot to do with the, 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 the non-athletic services that we offer in terms of, like, the curriculum and stuff right. like that. Right. But um, so we end up asking some of the same questions sometimes to both to the technology presenter as well as the curriculum presenter too. So okay. I'm kind of wondering if maybe maybe this year they'd just be uh, more you know different. But right. it's too late to change. That's fine. No, it's, it's definitely not too late to change. Maybe what we can do is because um, some of what would be presented in February. Seventh, for lack of a better word, would be nuts and bolts kind of things, but then things that are more of an instructional initiative with technology, we weave into the March twenty first. Yeah, okay. Maybe that's a way to do it. But that's good feedback. I will. I will think about that one. Anything else with this? This is helpful. Thank you. No problem. The, the only the only other personal note is I have a JV Forrestal T-shirt and a Sergeant T-shirt. So since they're both on the same night, and I got to decide which T-shirt to wear. <laughs> you wear one, and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't, and I have a front and a back. We can, we can have time for an outfit change if you're a lady. <sighs> yeah, no, I, I really can't take my T-shirt out in public anymore. But. <laughs> uh, that's a good problem to have. Um, Right, and, and you know, just to say again, we'll weave all the different communication feedback things that we're uh, doing in this process into the timeline as well. This is just the sort of board structure of it all. Uh, and I just wanted to do some quick updates about uh, COVID stuff. I've talked about this before, um, but we've just gotten a few things off the ground. So we are doing another vaccine or hosting a vaccine clinic uh, this Thursday. Uh, so, you know, like I have said in previous meetings, these are obviously optional uh, opportunities for folks. Um, we do think that there's a big need uh, in the community to, to have the clinic. It's primarily run with volunteers, so thank you to all the community volunteers that helped us do this. Uh, <clears throat> so we had 200, 300 slots were open this morning and 200 have already been taken, or probably more than 200 by this point. So it's offering everything, pediatric, uh, the adolescent um, ages, uh, adults, boosters. So you have, and all of the different kinds. So you have every option uh, that you want for that. So one thing I'm seeing with that is, uh, at least the, on my personal experience of going on the different uh, pharmacy websites, uh, they're sort of scheduling you out now four or five weeks sometimes to get uh, to get a vaccine, and so I think this meets the need because, you know, people are, who want to get a booster or to get started with uh, the vaccine process, they're able to just jump in and do it. Um, so Test to Stay is, is started last week and is operational and it's going really well. Uh, test to Stay is an option for students who are deemed a close contact uh, to someone uh, who has uh, COVID-19 that instead of quarantining, for 10 days uh, that they are able to keep coming to school if they do a rapid test in the morning. So uh, we have our testing partners with from the Village Apothecary. Again, they're the ones who help us with the vaccine clinic. Um, they are coming every morning from 7 to 8.30 to Beacon High School to test students uh, and some staff as well. And so I think last week, Henry, we were averaging a little like between 10 and 15 students at each, each morning. And, uh, and, and we imagine <laughs> that we're going to have this need for quite some time. Uh, what's great about it is it keeps kids in school. I, from the feedback we're getting, as parents have been ecstatic that we have this uh, option. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it just has been going for a few days, but it's been working well. Uh, you know, Anthony White brought this up in a previous meeting. All of these things are funded through Dutchess uh, County Department of Health. Um, we're not using uh, our school budget money to pay uh, for any of these things, really. 
Um, so this is all part of a federal grant uh, that each county health department got, I think, across the country. And so it, they're pretty confident that everything we do this year um, for the entire school year will be paid through this grant. Uh, so we're keeping our fingers crossed that that is indeed the case. Um, in January, we're going to work to expand test, not test to stay, but just uh, during that time frame, if people want to also just get their child tested, that the, like we could work in 10 to 15 students that way for people who might be concerned about something or, you know, you know they, they feel like they want their child tested. We want to try to expand it a little bit. We're trying to just get tests to stay going for these few weeks. And then a uh, huge shout out to our school nurse team. Uh, they have been also performing uh, some occasional COVID testing as needed. That's with employees. Also sometimes with students, like in a, I don't want to say emergency, but in like a timely sort of uh, need, we, we do have uh, kind of a reserve of rapid tests, again, that are provided to us by the county. And uh, our school nursing team has been great at sort of meeting with parents or meeting with an employee to do a rapid test uh, to, uh, to help things um, keep running. So I can't say enough about um, what our nurses uh, have accomplished this year and throughout this whole time. And, uh, and our partners with the testing um, have been really hugely helpful too. I also want to say, uh, give a little shout out to Dutchess County. I was on a regional uh, superintendent meeting last week, and it, it appears uh, that Dutchess County is one of the um, few counties pushing forward with tests to stay. Uh, in the region, which has been great. Uh, so other, other counties have been a little slower to move on it. To me, uh, it's a very common sense way of approaching um, COVID and contact tracing and keeping kids in school. One note about test to stay is it's only for attending school. It does not allow you to attend extracurriculars. Including sports? Yes. It, I'll be honest, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it's not my rule. That is a state rule. Um, so it's just for attending school. But even so, it's keeping kids in school, and it's been great. And then last but not least, uh, this is a kind of a bad picture, but uh, our first episode of the Bulldog Bulletin went out a few weeks ago, and we have the next issue or, the yeah, the next, uh, the next version coming out Tuesday of next week. I think the community is just um, struggling to deal with their anticipation for the bulletin <laughs> coming out, but it's coming. Uh, we are really trying to focus the Bulldog Bulletin on a lot of the amazing things happening in the district. So we're doing some stories on some of our employee groups, and we'll be doing those throughout uh, time, some focus on some of our students. Um, so it's been a fun project uh, for us to do, and we're excited to be having another one come out next week. That's it. Are there any questions about like the COVID test to stay, those kinds of things? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Are we having any difficulty getting enough of these tests or there's a good supply? <laughs> uh, that is a great question. When we, we, we have to ask sometimes several times with the county, then I think they're, you know, they're dealing with supply chain issues. So it's certainly not the county's fault, but they have been getting them to us. I think every school district would say they'd love to have a few more. But Anne-Marie, what's our current supply? We probably have around 100 right now. We just got a shipment of 100 on Friday. Right. But we can go through that 100. And that's not counting all the employee testing we do. That's not counting tests to stay. We can still go through that 100 in a few weeks probably. So, um, so it's not perfect, but it's really, it's not the county's issue. I think it's like, well... I don't really know what the issue is, supply chain stuff. I'm not sure. Okay. Alyssa? Can, can, any, can any student come in for a test in not the yet. morning or only kids who are known to have been exposed? Not yet. You, uh, families find out if they qualify for tests to stay because they get contacted by one of our school right. nurses. Uh, in January, what we'd like to do is expand it a little bit, although you'd still need to make an appointment, kind of like, kind of like you know other testing centers if you've right. had to go through all that. Uh, but I'd love to expand it just a little bit and have like appointments for people. You know, sometimes things happen, your child is exposed outside of school and you want right. to just test just to be sure. And well, I'd I'm love asking, to expand that for obviously parents 
Uh, parents have to give permission for all of this. Obviously, we're not right. testing students without parent permission. I'm just wondering for like a kid who was out like absent from school because he had a cold and uh, it's my child. He's going back tomorrow, but I'm, you know, should I have him tested? He's got a cold, but should I test? <laughs> should I test him tonight? Like what? No, Anne Marie. I have a home rapid usually, test. We usually so get I... a doctor involved with that part of it. Yeah, you don't necessarily have to have a COVID test. Normally, you know, if a doctor knows, you know, that it, it doesn't look like symptoms of COVID. Right. Then you can kind of rely on the medical doctor. Well, I didn't take him to the doctor for because he's got a stuffy nose. So I guess I'm asking for me. Can, I, can a parent send their child back to school the next day after staying home sick with cold symptoms without testing first? I know that was the case last year. I'm just wondering if that's still the case now. You deal with this a little bit more than yeah, I do. Yeah, because it's cold I mean, season, we normally, so. We would normally suggest going to the doctor, but if you haven't done that, if you, you know, on occasion we have had the nurses do testing. Okay. So it's one of the. It, it's one of the reasons why we have those extra tests. Okay. Like we've had some instances like this. Okay. I think maybe what you could do is call this, call the high, high school, call the high school nurse tomorrow morning first thing. Yeah. Okay. And see what they say too. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Hopefully that was helpful for other people, not just me. Thanks. Uh, another question. Uh, the governor came out with some proclamations, if you will, and talks about possibly doing some further rules in the later part of the month. I'm wondering if you've heard anything more about this and how it may affect us any different than today. I don't think so. I mean, you all know probably as much as I do, but I know we now have this month long mass mandate for public spaces or indoor public spaces that we've always had the mass in school. Um, so I, I, in my mind, we're sort of full steam ahead. I mean, I will say, and this is conjecture on my part, but <clears throat> as, as uh, I, I don't want to get too into this because I'm obviously not a medical doctor, but as, as more people who are vaccinated get like this mild version of the new variant, I do worry in the winter months about, about the number of people who may have to quarantine as a result. Um, so that, that's one of the worries I have, and I, I don't really know if there's anything the governor can do about that one way or the other. I do know this, us school folks, I mean, in Beacon for sure, but I, I think other districts feel the same way. We're very passionate about keeping school going and keeping school in person, and so I, I do not see them doing anything, you know, besides trying to support in-person school. I could be wrong, but we really want in-person school going all year yeah i have i have two questions but it's not related to your slides that's fine so i was going to wait till everybody else's okay so um can you speak a little bit more about the grant that you submitted to the state about a week and a half ago it was like 1.2 million um and um how you kind of would we stem into it sure uh we um we wrote a, it's called a 21st century learning grant. Uh, it's to expand after school opportunities for students. Um, so we, uh, at the elementary level, we partnered with the city of Beacon Recreation Department and the town of Fishco Recreation Department to, uh, to essentially provide um, tuition free after school uh, for, for uh, low income families. Uh, it's not a huge number because that, that cost adds up pretty quickly, but about 25 families is our hope. Uh, uh, probably about six families at each school and also provide those students with tutoring. And they would receive the other enrichment through what the rec programs are already doing for enrichment. Um, at the middle school, we were creating an after school group that would make three days a week. Excuse me, that um, uh, would partner with different uh, outside it would have like an hour of tutoring, sorry, and then an hour of enrichment. And we'd partner with uh, outside groups to provide the enrichment. So we have spoken with Compass Arts about partnering with us or Common Ground Farm. And 
like the list would go kind of on and on in terms of other uh, other agencies or groups that we would uh, uh, that we would partner with. Um, that program would probably work by quarter, like different kids could be in the program based on the quarter. Um, and then at the high school, similar, like a group of about 25 students would have an after school program with an hour, an hour of tutoring and academic focus. At the high school, we wanted to weave internships into, into the program. And so we talked with the City of Beacon about some of our students interning with the City of Beacon, either in the rec program or other parts of the City of Beacon. And then if we get the grant approved, that's when I'd probably go out and talk with other businesses or agencies about our students interning in, in that as well. So it has to have an academic focus. Uh, there also would be a family support through all, sort of woven through all of this. And, uh, and then an enrichment focus. And the enrichment would be where STEAM would come in. Uh, it could be like a technology enrichment or arts enrichment or something in, in, in all these programs. But part of it is a focus on uh, families in need of after-school support and trying to provide their children with low-cost or no-cost, you know, child care, academic support, and enrichment. And the 1.2 million, that's over five years. So each year it's, it's, it's about, you know, 240,000 uh, to do that. So we'll, we don't find out till April, <laughs> which I have to laugh at. I don't know why it takes so long, but. Um. Uh, my, other, my other question was um, the Dutchess County 2022 budget is, is stated to may, have made uh, $640,000 available to area school districts for youth mental health trauma training. Um, are we eligible for that? Um, I, I think we are. I don't know exactly like what they're offering, but um, I'll look into that. Okay. I'm pretty sure we are. All right. I have Thank a question. You. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the side effects, because you know there's side effects with everything, with the vaccines and everything, is that disclosed when the clinics are going on just to cover your mm -hmm. tracks and everything? And also are the nurses well-versed? with the side effects if a child comes in and they say they have chest pains or they feel like their throat is closing up do they know what to do um yeah our, our nurses are really well versed in this process the any buddy who gets vaccinated there's like a whole sign off thing that you do um where you get all that information too and i think um, they give you a sheet to take with you yeah at, at least we did okay yeah the, the, Actually, so that came up. I have another question now. So, I mean, I remember the, the, when the county runs the, the vaccination clinics up at J.C. Penney, they have somebody with a epinephrine and all that stuff. I mean, we have that on standby, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that, that this, this, the folks running these kind of pop-up clinics with us are doing a lot of the county clinics now. It's the same folks. Okay, so they're prepared yeah. for allergic reactions then with the epinephrine and stuff. Okay. I think that's the purpose of the 15-minute waiting period after the shot. You have to sit there for 15 minutes and be like they're observing everybody to make sure yeah. no one's having any yep. issue. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, a non-COVID question. Yep. <laughs> um, do we presently have an arts and education coordinator in the district? And if so, yeah. who is that? No, we don't. Where's the, what's the status of that? Um, I think we may have posted for all these things, and we probably didn't get any takers, so we can repost it. Post it again. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, committee reports and board comments. Anthony White. Hold on one second. Sorry, did I catch you off guard? No. I thought you were going to change it up. <laughs> it's all right. Let's see <laughs> I'm an old I, I mean, I can go if you want to go. No, that's fine. Way. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, so the curriculum committee has not met since our last meeting. However, Saggy did uh, send me an update as to what curriculum is working on. Uh, guiding reading professional learning meetings will be held for grades K-5 the week of November, or, or they were held November 29th to December 3rd. Uh, Atlas Rubicon uh, 
curriculum mapping software has been selected to use for the district curriculum mapping. Uh, training will begin January 27th from 4 to 5.30. I could speak that was one of the um, softwares that we were looking at um, earlier when Eric was here. Um, I could speak personally about it as well. That's one that Walco uses too. Um, posting, for, uh, posting for curriculum maps will be out on Wednesday, December 15th. Mapping will begin for ELA K5, um, ELA 6-8, and content areas, and English and content areas. Uh, the next curriculum committee meeting will be uh, Wednesday, January 26th at 3.30 in person in the LGI room. Um, for board comments, um, I just wanted to send a reminder. I know it's been a couple meetings about a board discussion on New Covenant and our, the district's roles and responsibilities with that. I just didn't want to go to the wayside. I think it's important for us to have that discussion in public so um, everybody has a perspective as to what is our role with that piece. We were, I think our thought was the January 10th meeting for that. Okay. Um, and then just, uh, I wanted personally, my personal opinion about Joy Bonneau's comments during public comment. Um, I don't think that we're not listening. Um, the district has made a point to be not political and to stick to whatever the guidance is and regulations are from the state. Um, as much as I love the information, I've been reviewing it. I think that the time would be better spent going to the legislators um, who make the laws and talk to the governor more frequently. I get that we're easily accessible, but I think that, you know, those comments should be shared with her elected officials. Thank you. Um, one question about the curriculum committee. Are you guys going to be going through course offerings in the, the way the curriculum committee? So I don't know how SAGI plans to do it. I know in the past, um, at the end of January, February, um, Eric would have uh, asked the guidance and teachers to submit any new course proposals, and then the curriculum committee would have met on them. Did you hear the question, Saggy? I just wanted to make sure you understood. With, when Eric was running the curriculum committee, there um, a lot of time that was spent in the committee reviewing course offerings, and there was this rubric and everything. And I'm just, it is happening. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, mm -hmm. Kristen. Uh, I don't have any comments about facilities. Um, we're meeting after the break, January sixth, I think. I think so. Uh, yeah, I. I have reviewed the information Ms. Bonneau has shared with us. Um, you know, I think that there's also, there's lots of information that she has shared that is um, not entirely accurate when you put it up against scientific journals and there's lots of ways, there's sites that Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has where you can look at cited studies and they, um, they evaluate them for veracity. Uh, I, I understand all of this is a leap of faith um, on some level that you have to take in the information and make your own decisions on a certain level. Um, but I think that as someone who does a lot of research with the pharmaceutical industry, um, I can tell you if I talk to somebody about a commercial for a cardiac medication, I have to do a 40 minute training for adverse event um, reporting, which is if someone during that interview for evaluating a commercial says that they hurt their toe after they took this medicine, I have to fill out like a four page report and yep. whether it's related or not to that medicine that gets captured and what they have to report to the FDA. So a lot of the things that are in those reports don't always correlate and the threshold to get past a lot of this stuff is quite high. But I, I also understand that People feel very strongly, and I agree with Anthony, that we're following regulation that's being set out by the state. And um, if, if someone feels really strongly about changing that, they need to go to the state. Thank you. Craig? So uh, earlier you heard a report from uh, Anna Sullivan about the Foundation for Beacon Schools. I serve as an advisor to that outfit. And uh, there are a number of very interesting initiatives in the hopper, um, including fundraising ideas. So uh, I'm pleased to see the progress that's going on there. And uh, 
I also had the opportunity to see the Beacon Players production of Holiday Inn. I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> and thought everybody did a very good job of presenting a grand old production. Thanks. And the next audit committee is January 6th as well. What she said. Yeah, yep. January 6th. Same thing. Great. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention in my comments just how nice it was to have Cy on here. I wanted to. Mm -hmm. It just. It's so the, the other thing that's really nice about that is that m when you see a student that has had goals that they set out to achieve that will impact their life, you know, and that will allow them to access school better in a way that works for them. And, the and seeing the support that he's had from his teachers and the connection he clearly has and his family, it was just, it's always so nice to have students come in. And um, that was just a really lovely treat and I congratulate him. I forgot to say that. Thank you. For Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad he could make it. It was a, he was scheduled a couple times and he has a pretty busy schedule as it turns out. So <laughs> I'm glad he could fit us I in. Got Zion. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthony. Uh, good evening. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, Matt, for the update. And uh, again, I echo congratulations to this to the to the BOCES program and 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 um, um, and the student and his and his and his family, you know, his whole support circle there that he has. I mean, that's that's very important, um, and he's very lucky. Uh, but also, of uh, very um, some of it's him, himself also pouring into the work too. So, congratulations. Um, the uh, um, so the City Beacon had this uh, undoing racism workshops and some seats open. Um, I asked them what they were going to do with it, you know, what they were doing after, you know, the, the training's over. Um, so uh, it, it, they may, I think they're going to put together a, a local work group uh, to discuss and suggest reforms um, based on the, the those who attended the last two. Um, I took mine in 2019, I think it was. Um, so you know, I, I you know I told them that I took the class or 2017 actually that was that long October 2017. So I told them I took the class already you know but I was interested in the conversation uh, for undoing racism in um, in this area. So um, I don't know if anybody else on the board took the class that the city was offering. There were two offerings on there, but um, but I had already taken the class, so they're aware that I'm that I'm that I that I have the training and that I'm willing to participate in the conversation. Um, that's about it for now. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, I don't know if any other board members were able to attend. I um, had signed up for it, but then they changed the time at the last minute, and I could not um, accommodate the time change, so I was not able to attend, unfortunately, this time. But if the opportunity comes up again, I would, I would try to, for sure. Hopefully, they'll keep us informed on how it evolves. Uh, John? I, I forgot to mention that. Jasmine? Um, I also wanted to speak about, um, what was her name? Joy? Joy Bonneau. Bonneau. Yeah. Um, and some of the things that she had said, I know during the process, we can't really say anything. Um, I was reading some of the things that she sends us, um, and I actually do agree with a lot of the things that she says. Um, working in a pharmacy, I do know about statistics and numbers, um, and there are side effects to everything. So with her saying all of that and also um, the dangers with vaccines, honestly, they might work for some people and they might, work, they might not work for other people. That is a real thing. Um, I don't disagree with anything that she's saying. And I think that should be stated. Um, it can be lonely being up there just by herself. And a lot of people may not like her because she thinks differently. And honestly, it shouldn't be like that. It really shouldn't. She can have a difference of opinion and someone shouldn't dislike her because of that. So I'm with her. Thank you. Alyssa? Um, the next meeting of the policy committee is January 31st. Um, I, on Joy Bonneau's points, 
I think that our school district offers choices to families and students in this community. And just as folks are, they have the choice not to vaccinate, we also have the choice to vaccinate. And um, I work for a large pharmaceutical company and uh, I can't go to work if I'm, if I'm not vaccinated. So, you know, my livelihood depends on, you know, you know, we don't all have to agree all the time with certain things, but sometimes it's what's best for some people. So I feel like it is a choice. No one is making parents vaccinate their children. Um, I do have a question, a COVID question for our process here. I think Anne-Marie, maybe you can answer. What happens if there's a COVID exposure at an after school event, like a sporting event, when we have others, like, for example, the JV basketball game last week was packed in the gym. So what happens if there's an exposure at a sporting event, but the, our te the testing that we offer doesn't apply to extracurriculars, it's only for school. So I know you, Matt, you said you don't understand why it is the way it is, but what happens if there's an exposure at a, at a school sports event or at an after school program? Well, our, our contact tracing does cover our own extracurriculars. Um, okay. The, the test to stay, there's two different things going on. Test to stay only, if you, if you test negative with one of these rapid tests, it only allows you to attend class that day. It doesn't then allow you to play basketball if you're on the team or okay. be in the Beacon Players or be in the band. Um, but we contact trace any school activity or during the school day. We do not contact trace uh, if a child is on a travel soccer team right. that's run by Beacon Soccer or uh, someone had a slumber party right. <laughs> or whatever, you know what I mean? And, and so that, that gets contact traced by the health department. And um, that's the difference there. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, about like having large events, um, you know, I highlighted some of those at the beginning of my update. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there are currently no uh, really regulations that say we can't. You know, we, we ask everyone to wear a mask. Does everyone wear a mask perfectly at these things? No. Uh, I think everybody tries. Um, I, I'm, I'm at a point where I, I really feel like trying to limit some of this stuff takes us back to um, not quite last year, but like to a place where kids aren't being able to live their lives more fully. And, uh, and so we, we haven't really at all these events we're having, including like the stuff in the fall, we haven't seen issues with spread. Um, the spread that we see, and I've been saying this for a year plus now is usually, uh, and this is said with no judgment, but it's usually at home or like a family gathering or somewhere where you're indoors for like hours on end mm -hmm. with other folks without masks on. That's usually where, uh, people catch it, and that's just, and that's where I think this virus is at its most per pernicious. It sort of works through families, I feel. Right. Um, but sorry, I'm giving you a long answer. But um, test to stay, the process only cut, only allows students to be in class. And I did share my personal opinion, which is worth nothing, right. with this that it doesn't make any sense to me yeah. that, that if I'm if I'm in the band. I can go to school all day because I tested negative, but I can't go play. Like that to right. me makes no sense, but that's the state. Um, and, uh, but, but we contact trace any school thing. We just don't contact trace outside school events. And we right. do get people who call us and say something happened at blah, blah, blah. Can you help us? And we always have to tell them you got to call the county on those kind of issues. The right. county will do that part. One other question. Um, like I said, my son stayed home for, from school with a cold today. So if I have an at-home rapid test, can I give, administer that test to him? And will the school accept that result? So the only problem with the at-home test is we're not, we can't ensure that it was- That I'm doing it right. And that the person <coughs> needed it had it done. Right. So we would probably retest. I see. Okay. 
I mean, Alyssa, you're speaking to, I think, something that every single parent <laughs> has struggled with for a year is when your kid gets a runny nose or, you know, yeah, I mean, I mean, some I'm, really I'm, mild symptoms like yeah. what you do. I'm speaking from my own experience from today, but I think it's helpful for every parent to know right. like, if your kid stays home from school with a cold, do we still need to have them tested before we can send them back to school? Because my impression was that that's not the case any longer, but maybe I was wrong about that. Also, being vaccinated or not vaccinated has something to do with it as well. There's a, okay. There's different criteria for that. Good to know. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I have a few updates for the board. One, um, I received an email from Dan Pettigro regarding the stadium sale. Um, that the Town of Fishkill Planning Board granted final approval of the three lot subdivision of the district's 64.75 acre parcel, which will enable the district to convey lot number two, the stadium parcel, to the county. Um, the planning board's approval was conditioned upon the recording of the district's access, water, sewer, and easement, water and sewer easements over and across the stadium lot, and the signature of the planning board chairman of the subdivision plan, um, which will also be filed with the county clerk. So once those conditions are satisfied, we will be in a position to close the sale. I will keep you posted with any more news on that. Um, I also, um, regarding Joy Bonneau's comments, I think, you know, hopefully um, I've made it clear that I think we are all listening. Um, I respect her courage in coming forward to speak her mind. I don't necessarily agree with um, the sources she's using or her opinion, but it has nothing to do with liking her or disliking her. And I feel that everyone on the board has been very respectful of that. You know, it's not easy. I know from personal experience, it's not easy to be on that side of the podium trying to speak your mind. And I appreciate the board's respect for individuals that bother to do it. Um, I attended the NISBA budget and le um, legislative re preview webinar on Thursday. And um, I've, I think I've been able to do it most years that I've been on the board. And I just wanted to say what a different um, process it was this year, having a different um, governor in the seat. Um, it was really, I think for the first time, everyone is able to start thinking about what we need to do best by our students rather than pushing back on a lot of threats of cuts and consolidations of aids and things like that. So, so far it seems like it's um, a pretty straightforward process where foundation aid will be fully funded. NISBA is advocating to add a bump to that based on um, the fact that the formula is old and that inflation has been pretty intense recently. Um, but in general, that seems like it's moving forward. They want to continue to uh, make sure that it will be funded for the, th the next three years. Um, and they have some, some other things about the formula they, that they would like to have updated. Um, they, um, they really didn't focus much on COVID, which they said they did on purpose, that they really want to sort of create this atmosphere of moving forward, even though everyone acknowledges that COVID is still and will be a big part of our lives for a while. Um, they, but when they were talking briefly about COVID, they talked a lot about supply chain issues and um, bus driver shortages was a big issue for every district. And, um, and so NISBA is advocating for the um, retirement income to be um, the cap to be raised for bus drivers because it is a lot. It's a great job for retirees and, and many people have to stop working when they reach the limit of income um, based on their retirement income um, and also changing the licensing situation a little bit. Um, given the fact that we aren't just trying not to um, receive cuts, which has been you know the story every year for the last few years, they really talked about areas of, inve of investment where we would like to see you know, more resources put for our students. Student, student health and mental wellness was a huge um, subject of discussion, including a very broad definition of school safety, um, child safety zones having to do with walking to school versus taking the bus, um, but also 
how are we safe in schools, letting schools cho choose what makes the school feel safe, whether that's a school resource officer or more counselors, um, and give, empowering them there. Um, they talked about raising the BOCES um, salary cap for CTE instructors, which is, um, has been a, you know, a barrier to getting enough instructors in that area, um, continuing to address the digital divide, and for the first time, they talked about um, state funding for sustainability and adaptability, which I thought was an interesting um, new conversation that I haven't heard in the past. Um, and that is it for me. Thank you. We have a little bit of unfinished business. Uh, we don't have any new business. Yeah, so unfinished business. We have three items from our policy committee um, meeting minutes. So can I have a motion to approve 10.01, um, the revised minutes of the policy committee meeting from November 10th, 2021? I, I would actually would like to expand the motion to accept 10.01, 10.02, 10.03, and 10.04. Okay. They're all, they're all related. Okay, so you're making that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Alyssa, are there any comments or questions? No, thank you for the revisions. I think they, I think they accurately reflect what the policy committee came up with. Yes, agreed, thank you. Great. Any other? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes eight to zero. There's no new business, so moving on to the consent agenda. <coughs> The use of the consent agenda permits the Board of Education to make more effective use of its time by adopting a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Any member of the board who wishes to discuss individually a particular piece of business on the consent agenda may so indicate, and that item will be considered and voted on separately, thus preserving the right of all board members to be heard on any issue. Are there any items that any members would like to have pulled from the consent agenda? 1203-0405. Any others? Can I have a motion to approve 12.01 through 12.15, less 12.03, 12.04, and 12.05? Anthony, so moved. Second. Anthony, Kristen, comments or questions? Uh, thank you for the donation. Uh, no, it was 12.09. Yep, great. Um, That's my comment. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I'm pleased to see another um, agreement here with the BAOP. Thank you for your hard work on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes eight to zero. I have a motion to approve 12.03. So moved. Second. Anthony, Kristen, comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. I am in favor, passes seven to one. Make a motion to pass 12.04, the minutes from the Audit and Finance Committee. Anthony, is there a second? Second. Uh, comments or questions? All in, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. I'm in favor, passes seven to one. Make a motion to pass 12.06, wait, what was the next 12 one? 12.05. 12.05, approve the, the minutes from the Facilities Committee meeting. Anthony, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Greg, comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. I'm in favor. Passes seven to one. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting, please? Oh. oh sorry, was there something else? No. Nah. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm in favor. Passes eight to zero. Please have a great holiday, everyone. Thank you.